Welcome to Empower Humans. Welcome again to the Empower Humans podcast. This is episode 94, day 25 of our continuing coronavirus uh, chit chat every day. I don't know if we call it chit chat, but here we are. I'm chatting to you and I appreciate you joining me today. I'm flattered you spend time with me. I uh, want to address the most important thing up front. As always, you are absolutely priceless. Nothing will change that. Nothing can or ever has or ever will change that. And you're never alone. Right now, a lot of people might be feeling alone, but that's a delusion. I know that uh, maybe physically you are alone and maybe your life's a little different than it was like most of us, uh, you know, during the last 30 days or so. But you're absolutely not alone and uh, the riches are found in you. You're absolutely above all the nonsense and material stuff in this world. So let's move into all this today. Uh, I want to get into the numbers first and foremost. Uh, We kind of do a little update on that each day, but total uh, global confirmed cases of this coronavirus, COVID-19, are 1,853,505 cases as of right now. Of that, 114,257 deaths. Um, 423,000 plus have recovered uh, but also, as I look to the United States, uh, we're talking about 1.8 million cases. 560,000 of those plus are in the United States. And, of course, the epicenter, as we know by now, is New York and New Jersey, that tri-state area. Uh, 189,415 cases in New York, 9,385 deaths. And I look at those numbers, I do some simple math in my head, and I realize, boy, that's a 5% uh, mortality rate in New York. And I look at New Jersey where we add another 61,000. That brings us to 250,000 cases just between New York and New Jersey of confirmed tested cases. I believe we're doing a lot more testing in the United States as well. Um, and uh, so anyway, these are the numbers we're dealing with. Um, I, As I look around where I am, I'm in Nevada. I'm seeing these numbers start to level off a little bit. And I touched on yesterday, we had these Thunderbirds, these Air Force planes flying in formation over Las Vegas yesterday, which I got to see in person and here because I live nearby a hospital and they flew over all the major hospitals and uh, just did so in support and out of love and recognition for those both suffering uh, with this virus and the caretakers in the hospital, all the medical staff and professionals there. So that was a beautiful thing. But we did touch on that already yesterday. Um, Before we go into the rest, uh, we touched on some of these numbers. I want to tell you, we have Elena Cardone coming uh, on the podcast this week. And uh, that's going to, the interview is going to take place Thursday. We'll probably release it on Sunday. Uh, So if you have any questions for Elena Cardone, if you know who that is, look her up. It's just E-L-E-N-A Cardone, C-A-R-D-O-N-E on Instagram. Lots of great material. They've got a couple daughters as well. Beautiful stuff that they post uh, from parenting to business. Uh, They've got probably a multi-billion dollar real estate company now, and he does big events here in Vegas, her husband, Grant Cardone. So if you have any questions for Elena, send me a DM on uh, Instagram at Empower101. Uh, Also go to hope.empowerhumans.com for more information related to the coronavirus stuff. And uh, like I've been saying, we've got some great memes, saw some more great ones today that we're going to be throwing up there. Well over 100 memes if you need some comic relief. I know everybody does. They say laughter is the best medicine. I don't know how true that is, but it's always been a a help in my life as we deal with hard things off and on. And this is definitely a hard thing for most of us. So go there, check out all that, and send in questions you have for Lena Cardone. I, I, I did see one meme today that I thought was funny. It's police arresting a guy on a beach. The beach was basically empty nobody there but there's two police officers and one uh, <laughs> one guy get, apparently getting arrested and then there's this little speech speech bubble above one of the officers that says why aren't you at walmart you know implying that of course you're better off at walmart than sitting on an open air beach but in any case i thought that was funny it's in our uh, insta story today if you want to take a look at that um also i saw the light coming through the clouds today kind of it was cloudy rainy here in las vegas and uh but it came through on Easter in this beautiful way that I thought, wow, that's that's a beautiful kind of symbolic thing and hopefully a hopeful uh, gesture from the powers that be in the universe as uh, we try to get through this uh, somewhat darker time uh, that no one expected coming into 2020. But here we are, and we will get through it, my friends. Uh, on the note of this guy and this meme of why aren't you at Walmart, um, I heard about a mayor from a place called Alton, Illinois. His name is Brent Walker or maybe it's Brent Walker. But uh, in any case, he was really urging citizens, uh, you know, stay at home like a lot of leaders right now. 
governors and so on are stay at home, no, uh, you know, congregating in big groups, uh, social distancing. And then within about 24 hours of this, uh, his wife <laughs> was found in some big group uh, get together. Uh, and I don't believe she was arrested, but it kind of made him look a little foolish. And uh, so I thought that was kind of funny. But uh, we ought to take all this seriously. We can get some comic relief, but let's take this seriously. And it looks like it's working for those of most of us who are taking it seriously as uh, these numbers are apparently leveling off. We are still experiencing well over 2,000 deaths per day just in the United States. Um, but believing uh, based on the models that, uh, you know, these professionals are looking at, scientists and uh, the uh, World Health Organization and the CDC, that uh, these numbers are starting to level off in the next few days will reach a peak, which means that we'll be coming down uh, from there. Now, President Trump and the other powers that be need to uh, make some decisions. I hope they don't... Uh, jump the gun, getting everyone all back uh, going full throttle with the economy just because this could be a second wave much bigger than the first and uh, really hit us hard. Uh, we can't afford these $2 trillion plus stimulus packages. And by the way, uh, President and others have said, you know, we're, we're open to doing another stimulus if we need to, which means already sending $1,700, you know, $1,200 to adult, $500 for each child, uh, depending on the family situation and structure and income, uh, which isn't a ton of money for most people, but it's, you know, it's a boost. But it's also kind of made up printed money, which puts our con country in debt. So I don't know how this is all going to play out because from back in the I, – I could go off on a tangent here. We go back to the early 2000s. Our national debt was in the 3 to $5 trillion dollar range, which seems like big numbers. And then all of a sudden, 2008, we jumped up with this financial crisis to well over $15 trillion. And here we are, well over 20, probably 22 or so. I don't, I haven't looked at the numbers lately. Anyway, that's what's going on as it concerns that. But stimulus checks are uh, on the way, apparently. ACH uh, transactions in terms of a direct deposit of some sort for those who have that on file with the IRS. And if you don't, you can and also there's some links. We'll put a link in the uh, notes of this episode if you need to check for your particular situation and track all of that and or enter your banking information, whatever you might need to do uh, through that link as well that I learned about. So look for that in the notes of the podcast episode. And uh, we, we've also learned in the recent days that every U.S. state, Wyoming was the very last one. This is the first time in American history that every state in the union has a state of emergency disaster declaration. Uh, think about that for a second. There are times, and by the way, today we had some tornadoes as well, and our hearts go out to those people. It's just one thing after another in this world. But again, we will get through this. Let's keep our heads up high no matter what happens. Uh, but that's what I'm talking about with the tornadoes. We think about a hurricane or earthquakes or various things that put states and areas in particular uh, states of emergency, so to speak. But uh, to have it all at once in every single state in the union, 50 states, uh, that's just crazy. Again, the most overused but most apt word to use at this time has been unprecedented. And all these things are unprecedented. But again, let's stay positive, keep our heads up. I uh, was looking yesterday, we had Daniel Emmett on the podcast, I think it was about episode 64 or so. Uh, we did a video interview, you can go take a look at that and or listen to it. Uh, great interview, he was on America's Got Talent, but he did a free concert uh, live, I think he uh, did so from here in Vegas, he lives in Vegas, and I caught some of that, so you can probably still look for that online, I don't know if, if he moved it over to YouTube yet or anything, but uh, excellent, excellent singer, great talent. Uh, and so look for that, Daniel Emmett and our interview with Daniel. That was great. I also saw that Cody Lee, who uh, won America's Got Talent, spoiler alert, <laughs> this year, uh, is doing a concert as well. And he's also performing off and on with other musicians, uh, like a lot of people are right now. And I think that's just beautiful. People are performing from their homes or uh, harmonizing in the sort of choir through Zoom or some of the nurses at hospital. I've seen all kinds of beautiful things happen. Humanity, this is why I do this podcast. I look at what humans are capable of, and it just blows my mind. In the face of all kinds of adversity and difficulty, 
humans come together and and have the capacity collectively as a whole to turn things into a beautiful thing, no matter what we're facing. And I've seen it over and over and over again in my lifetime. And uh, so watch for those concerts, watch for these other things, depending on what you're into and all that. But um, I think that we're going to come out of this uh, hopefully in the next 30 days or so. I'm not going to throw any timelines because I, I, hey, I ain't in charge. <laughs> you don't want me in charge. I'm just kidding. Maybe you do. Uh, I saw also that uh, Disney World is furloughing 43,000 employees, which uh, is staggering. I didn't even know they had that many employees at Disney World. I thought maybe they had people running a couple rides and alternating and following me around the park. But uh, no, 43,000 employees. You think about Disney World, and again, I could get into this for a little while. Might as well, because uh, we're all uh, in some sort of quarantine right now. Uh, Walt Disney bought just, I think, under 200 acres to build Disneyland in California. And going over to Disney World, he did it in more of a, a sly, clandestine fashion under kind of shell corporations so they wouldn't know it was Disney and all that. But he bought uh, over 27,000 acres over there, which is over 50 square miles, which is a huge contrast in terms of volume of land. And uh, that's why they have, uh, you know, two water parks and a bunch of extra hotels and tons of open land still. They could probably build five more uh, theme parks (laughs) on the land they have there. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at their setup. But 43,000 employees, that's just one corporation and one of their uh, assets, so to speak, in Disney World, which is a big one uh, in Florida. So that's uh, that speaks volumes. We talked the other day about 17 million who so far, and that's just as of last week, uh, have filed for unemployment. We're probably well over 20 million by now, and these numbers continue to go up. So something's got to give here because this is all unsustainable. Um, so this virus, man, it, it punched us. Uh, and our hearts go out to all those Disney workers and all those folks who can't go to Disney World and Disneyland, these other things at this time. It's spring break for a lot of people. My kids were having spring break this week, Um, but it is what it is, and here we are. And by the way, let me say again, I know I'm all over the map today, but I'm just talking to you from the heart. I don't have a big script. i got a few little notes, some stuff we're covering, but I want to remind you too, happy Easter. You're probably listening to this day after Easter, so... Uh, happy belated Easter, but we did say it for today's episode too. So uh, happy Easter and happy uh, other things coming up like Mother's Day coming soon. We got to keep living our lives no matter what's what's going on. So uh, also uh, one thing that I heard, and we're going to touch on a few last things here, but uh, year over year alcohol consumption from March of 2019 versus March of 2020, alcohol consumption up 33%. 33%. I'm not a drinker myself. Uh, I know there's various reasons people do this, and plus so many folks at home and all the stress and everything. I understand it. Uh, I I see why this has happened, but I thought it's an interesting statistic that we ought to touch on here and uh, some more food for thought as we get through this together. We will get through this, my friends. I believe in you. I believe in us as humanity. It's, uh, again, why we do this podcast. We're approaching 100 episodes I believe Elena Cardone might be our 100th episode, but uh, share this podcast with friends and family. Go on Facebook, go on MySpace. You still have a MySpace? Uh, Some of you may not even know what that is. (laughs) Go share the podcast, text it out to your friends. There's all kinds of ways to share Twitter and Instagram, and uh, we love you for doing that, and I know some of you are. Other than all that, just want to express our love and also leave you with our challenges. Study. Keep studying, start studying, whatever it might be. Listen to books. Uh, you know, that's what I do. I like listening to audiobooks. And I'm out and about in the car or doing the dishes or various other passive activities where I can focus my mind still and kind of multitask and get some things done. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Or sit down and read a book the old-fashioned way. Uh, there's some great things about doing that, and it's a beautiful, relaxing thing for a lot of people. Um, just don't drop the book in the bathtub or anything. You know, that paper doesn't do well in water. But to study, find a way to study. Uh, and that includes documentaries. That includes just stimulating your mind in whatever way. And, of course, uh, make great moments is our second challenge. Do that with your loved ones. Do that with friends and family. I hope that for those who celebrate Easter, you were able to do that uh, during your Easter celebrations, despite the situation going on in the world. 
Uh, so make great moments, surprise your loved ones, get flowers for your wife, or uh, it doesn't even have to be a gift. Or if it is a gift, it could be something simple that you made at home, uh, you know, origami or a note, a beautiful note just kind of uh, written and stuck on the mirror in the bathroom. Uh, these are all the various ways that are small means that we make great moments in our lives. And like I said, they will be pillars as we you know, come to the close of this life and look back over <laughs> what we did, good and bad. These will be pillars of, of goodness to overshadow where we may have fallen short. And the last challenge, as always, is let's keep doing this podcast together, my friends. I know we're going to get through this. Share the podcast. Go to hope.empowerhumans.com. Send us some questions for Elena Cardone. Uh, DM me or send them to info at empowerhumans.com uh, at Empower101 on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, until next time, empower yourself, empower the world around you. Thanks so much for listening to Empower Humans. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review this podcast. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit EmpowerHumans.com. We'll catch you next time.